Well, hello, my friends. This is Jay, and this is Jay's Knit and Pearl Jam. <laughs> and I'm telling you, the time has just flown by. I am just out of, I should have lost weight trying to keep up with it. <laughs> but unfortunately, that's not how it works, is it? Well, how are you? I'm great. Uh, the weather is fine here. Uh, hot, cold, hot, cool, well, you know. <laughs> It's autumn, what can I say? <laughs> so, as I was getting ready, of course, it's almost Thanksgiving. I've just about, you know, run past my uh, date of getting things ready. But I thought about something that I haven't, uh, that I said I was going to um, share with you a long time ago. And I just got around to doing it. I thought, well, I'll make a little quick video while I'm working on my regular tutorial. And come on and just show you. I wouldn't even get on camera. I'll just say hi. <laughs> and I'll come on in and just, just kind of show you, give you an idea of this little simple, uh, I don't know, I call it pretty um, charm candy, little accessory, a little accent. You know, Jay loves to put the little extra on. <laughs> okay, so, well, as you can see, Today is about beads. Beads, beads, beads. And I'm not even a bead person. <laughs> and I have so many beads. I don't know why I buy them. I guess because when Joanne has a 6 or 70%, I just feel guilty not buying any. But, a few years back, way before I, about the time I, I got my computer, way before I come on YouTube, um, you know, I, of course, Saw some of my friends, they did beat, you know, beading and made jewelry and stuff like that. And I thought, oh, I don't think I ever want to get into that. Man, they got a lot of stuff. <laughs> beads and, and everywhere. So, but after I got my computer and started kind of watching YouTube, I still had no idea I was going to be on. I was just watching. You know, I'm a knitter. Crocheting, not as much, but, you know, I knit and I would just sit there and knit and watch. And some kind of way, I started watching, not knitting programs. I don't know why I wasn't interested. I never did watch knitting stuff. I started watching scrapbookers. That's how I learned about YouTube. I don't know. Something must have caught my interest, and I decided to look. And then, you know, once you go down, one click on one, then the sidebar pops up and all the stuff. And then you just continually always looking or, you know, watching YouTube, watching new people that come on sharing their crafty side. So, I don't know, maybe around uh, 2010, somewhere around that, 2010, 2011, whatever. I was watching, and they were, they were I, I got enamored. They were having all kind of these little pins they would make. They were called stick pins. And they were so into them. These are scrapbookers now. They were so into and bead people. Um, they were so into it. They would have like they call them stick pin swaps. That's how when I really paid attention to them. They would have stick pin swaps. Not only would they make stick pins and swap them to put in cards or in their scrapbook stuff or things like that. Uh, but they would have swap meetings where they'd come you'd make a bunch and I guess you'd go and swap I don't know if they uh, bid it on them or I don't know you know I didn't get into that that much but they even went through the trouble to make stick pin swap covers or little boxes or containers so I said my gosh isn't that interesting I said well I wonder what what do they do with them and um uh, you know, they would show their different ways of displaying them on different things and cards and on little pillows. And, you know, there were little boxes they would make and they'd walk you all through it. And I will. I, of course, I didn't know I was going to be on YouTube. I was just looking because I was knitting and I was just, you know, wanting to watch something. But I will try to go back. I, I tried to go back and, and search out some of the first um, YouTube channels that I start watching. And some of them are still on. I don't know if they're still doing their crafts, but I found the, some of the old ones from 2011, 2010, 2012, whatever, 2013. And uh, so I, I just want, the reason I'm telling y'all this because 
this was not my idea. I was just watching them, remember? And then all of a sudden, ding, 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 something hit me. She had it on, somebody had it on some kind of little pillow or something. But I thought, and I'm sitting there knitting, knitting a sweater probably. And I thought, well, wouldn't that be pretty on my sweater? Wouldn't that be kind of pretty? So needless to say, I went about and bought a few beads. And I just wanted to let you see some of the stick pins that I made and how I made them. Tell you all the supplies. But I'm giving credit where credit is due to all my beautiful scrapbookers and their use of stick pins or hat pins. And I'm calling them, of course, you know, these are my, I don't, know, I, I don't really know if I have a name for them. Yarn pins. <laughs> no, 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 sweater pins. Okay, we'll think, we'll think of something. Okay. So, all right, here we go. This is just to kind of get you into a simple idea of what they are. All right, I think, I don't know if you can see it on here. Or should I take it off? I'm going to bring some close. Let's see, I didn't think ahead of that how I could, how I could show it. But let's just take some off, off my little stand here. Okay. Yeah, I don't know if that's going to be easy enough to see. That might be. All right. There is just some beads, and they're on a pin, a long pin. Oh, you can just make all kind of designs. Oops, I don't have that pin on. Let's try this one. See, you just want to use your beads and make beautiful pins. And as you can see, all right, let's, let me look over here now. After I make mine, I use to stick them in a, this is just a little scented candle that came in a little tin. I stick mine in candle because, like I said, I'm not a scrapbooker, so I'm not going to be using mine like they're using theirs. We're going to be using ours in some of our sweaters. Look at that one. to wear to accent our sweaters. So what do you think of that? Think you might like to give it a try? Okay, I'm going to show you. Let's see one more. You don't have to have great expensive beads. These are just little inexpensive beads. I got it. Joann's, Hobby Lobby, Michael's. Now, I like, of course, I buy a lot of just strands. If you buy the strands, you're going to need somewhere once we cut these apart. So I suggest that you go ahead and get you a bead box. Now, we're not getting into beading, <laughs> but you do need to have these beads up in something. I drink a lot of Crystal Light. That's how I get my water in. I just have a big old tumbler of water, sprinkle a little Crystal Light, some kind of flavor. And then when I'm done, I have, I've been collecting these so many years, I've got, I don't know, probably a garbage can full of them. These little plastic containers. So I put a lot of beads in here because I drink Crystal Light. So isn't that cute? But you can get, but anyway, but you're going to need something once we start cutting the beads apart. So I've got a bead box already, ready to go. So, uh, let's see, let me, um... Let me just kind of pull everything out that you're going to need, and then we'll go from there. Okay, now, I don't want you to get scared and go, oh my gosh, Jay, we got to get out. No, no, no. I'm just putting stuff that I already have. You want just very simple supplies. On it. You're just trying to see if this is something that you might like to try doing. Uh, like I said, I'm not a bead person, but I got all these crazy beads. I don't know. <laughs> but... But the first thing you need to do, you can get this at most of your local stores. I wouldn't go to order and stuff. Just see if you can find it local. Uh, you can go to a bride shop. You can go to a Joann's and go to the floral or the bride department over at Hobby Lobby. Uh, Michael's, go to the floral or the bride department, the wedding department. And the first thing you're going to need, now these didn't come in this little box. These are, I just got this little box just to put all my stuff in. Alright, here's a little box, and what you need, one of the first things you need, 
you need is a cassage or a wedding pin. Here's what they look like. They're long, skinny pins. And they have, I would try to find one with a little top on it like that. But you can see they're pretty long, about two and a half inches maybe. I think you can order longer ones, but what we're going to do, these will work just fine. In the wedding department, see, now here are the pearl heads. You can get some that have pearls already on them. See that? The cassage pins, get the long ones. They do have short ones, but they're not, they're just too short. So you want long cassage pins or wedding pins or something like that. They'll know what you're talking about if you don't see them and you're having a hard time finding them. Look around. Now here's a little short one. So that's a little short, but you can see it has a pretty little crystal head on it. I was just trying to see if I had some more others that were different. No, I, I think I got these. The two main ones I have are the beaded head with a pretty little crystal bead and then the pearl head. And that's fine. Just get one pack of those. They're not that expensive. You get your pack. You're going to take them home uh, so that we can work with them. Stop. <laughs> These are sharp. These are dangerous. These could hurt someone very badly. Not only a child, but a pet that's going to, you know, your cat's all up here on the runner. Uh-uh. No, this is something you would do and, and kind of do at a time when you could just sit and not have, uh, you know, you don't want to have anyone else around them. These are dangerous, very sharp, and you wouldn't want to stick two and a half inches of this into your hand or anything else. So, now, we understand that. We're having fun, but this is not a toy. All right. The other thing, like I said, most, I got most of my stuff at Joanne's or, you know, your local s store. So you, you need these pins. Those are the pins. All right. Now you need some bean beads. It's a lot easier just to buy them on string because then sometimes just to start, I just, when I first started, I just took them off the, just like they came off the string. I just put them on there and glued them on there just to see how they look. I thought, oh, okay, well, that's cute. And then you, after a while, you can get creative on yourself. But these are just strands of beads. You can get them at Michael's, Joann's, Hobby Lobby. I've got them, you know, I just buy them if they're very, if they're really on sale or some, you know, a good price. Like I said, because I have so many, I don't need to be buying beads, but... As you can see, I have some. <laughs> see, a lot of these come with all the connecting beads. So see, that could be just by itself. It's already ready. And then, of course, like I said, you're going to need something to put your beads in, a little box or something, because once we start cutting them loose, you don't want beads all over your house. They'll rough on your vacuum cleaner. And, of course, you don't want anyone to swallow or get close to your beads. These are a hazard. So, you know, please pay attention to that part so you have some beads the next thing you're going to need we have pins we have beads you're going to need a glue now you can use hot glue but it's just so messy so the scrapbookers some of the scrapbookers were using this stuff but it's called glossy accent the lady kept i couldn't understand i thought she was saying glassy and i couldn't find it but it's glossy g-l-o-s-s-y accents You'll find it over in the scrapbook department. I found mine at my local Joanne. It comes in a little bottle. I recognize the bottle. That's how I found it because I kept telling them. they like, I never heard of that. And then I, I saw the bottle. Glossy accents. This, this is good enough for, you know, so far they work for me. Then I don't have to deal with that hot glue and my hands are already sensitive. And they peel a lot because I'm always in water. So anyway, uh, but you'll need that bottle of that uh let's see what else you're going to need a little clear cup something like this to hold our beads and think to hold our as we finish some we need to hold them to let them dry a place to let them dry 
So, let me think of anything else right off the bat that you need. Okay, we got the glue. All right, we're ready to go. There's nothing else to do. It's so simple, so easy. So, the first thing you want to do is, of course, get your bead box. Or get some kind of container because as we start to cut these beads loose, the first thing I need to move these. You know, I don't want to stick myself. They they hurt people. They really do. It's a pin. So, you're going to just, let's see if I'm on camera here. I moved this box. Yeah. Let's see. All right, here we go. All right, so you just start cutting, maybe snip it and start releasing some of the beads into your little bead box. Like that. Now, I don't know how I had them in there, but see, I'm going to go ahead and do this just to save time on the camera. All right, let's see. So I'll just release some of them. Cut the little top off. And find a place. I got like four or five of these things full of beads. <laughs> okay, here's some big ones. Let's see if I can do a big one. Oh, that's a pretty one in. Oh, look at this pretty kind of. Uh, let's see, these might come. These are from Michael's. These are Jesse James or something. Jesse something. They're the kind of hard to cut. Well, and let's see, can I put them over here in the box? So far. Is that good? Okay. Make sure I'm back back enough. Let me back out just a little bit. I want you to be able to see what I'm doing though. Okay. Man, I never know where that camera is. Alright, take them all off. Ooh, that's, there's one there. Take that off. And they'll jump all over. Okay, so now I have some beads. And we're just going to play with some. I'll move some of these up here out of the way. Now, the next thing is, of course, when I work, I'm working on my background is always a towel. So I suggest that you get your, yourself a nice little hand towel or some kind of little, something that's easy to hold, hold your beads in place. Sometimes just a nice cotton dishcloth like this. You know, something like that. So you can really see your bees and they won't get away from you. Like I said, we're not be going to become bee people. So you, I'm not investing in a whole lot of stuff. I'm just trying to uh, use this to enjoy something. And that's going to be distracting. But, uh, but you know what I'm saying. For you at home, I already have a towel. All right. Here's my little cup. Here's my glossy accent. It comes with a nice little tip. Let me see if my tip is working. If, um, yep, it's flowing. So... And I've had this a long time, and it's still, still in good shape. Well, now, the fun part. All we have to do is start mounting or adding beads. If I'm close enough, I'll come in just a little bit. Right there, all right. Now, all right, so on the pearl one, let's see if I have anything. Well, let's start with this, this pretty little... Alright, so I have a bead, so I might want to have a little cap under the bead. So I'm reaching into the container and get one of those little caps that I just took off. And I pop it on there. Does that make sense? Let's see, can I get my hand out of the way? Am I in a shadow? Alright. And the next thing you do, the first thing after you, well, uh, I saw one lady said, do this first. She said, go ahead and put them in order like you might want and then play around with them first to see. Well, okay, I've got a clear one. How about if I get one of these turquoise ones? How about if I get one of these and stick it next right up under that little thing? So I'm mixing them up. Look at that. That's pretty already. Okay, then I need something under here, so I might get another one of these little, see that? I might get another one of those. Well, I want something crystal though, so now I'm going to reach over here and get one of these big clear ones, and I'm going to stick it on there. Ain't that pretty? All right, I think we have a winner right there. Look, 
I'm going to turn it. I'm going to hold my, put my finger on it and hold it. Look at that. Now, once you see that you like something, then you go back up to the top. Just hold it with your fingers. Let them down like this. Now, with the glossy accent, rotate it and put just a little bit of glue there. Slide the next one. Just kind of hold it with your finger. You can slide it. I hope I'm on camera. Put a little glue there. Slide the next one up. You know, I've already kind of got in, I already tried it out. Put a little glue around here. Just rotate it. Last one. Now I can kind of turn it upside down. Hold that in place. Put a little glue around. It dries clear. You won't see it. Put it down. Now, I like to put an end bead. Something, let me, see, let me try this one. Something that's going to kind of be like a stopper. That's going to kind of end the whole thing. So there's one. There's a, just a plain little silver bead. So, at the Rotate this, put a little glue. I'm going to stick a little small, really small bead right there. And look, now I'm going to hold it for a minute as I turn it back. I hope all this on camera. <laughs> I have no idea where my hands are. <laughs> uh, I, don't, I don't have that kind of camera you can... Okay, see that? Now, in order for all this to set, this is why you need a little cup. You're going to stick them in this cup upside down, just like that. Just stick them in there like that. Now, I think we need to cut some more. Let's see what else we have over here. Ooh, that's pretty, isn't it? Oh, that's gold. All right, let's see. I need some more stick pins. I don't have anything out with pearls yet that I can put a pearl with. Let's see. So let me go back to let me go back to another one of these. Okay. All right, let's see another combination. All right. You already have the little top. So that's nice. And again, I'm gonna start. I'm gonna see how it looks first before I start gluing stuff. I'm gonna put that like a little it goes right now. Yeah. That doesn't look as pretty. That's not fitting good. Let's see if I've got something else. All right, let's do this. Reach over and I'll put a silver bead. A little tiny silver bead that I have. Oh, something's wrong with this pen. Sometimes you get a bad pen. All right, something's wrong with that pen. I knew it wasn't going on there good. All right, let's try it again. All right, let's go back to this. Sometimes you'll get a bad pen head. All right, so now, there's a pen. Well, I kind of like that yellow. Did That was pretty, wasn't it? So we stick that on there. Oh, that's pretty. Let's see. What else can we put? How about another silver bead? Let's see what I got over here. I got a little where you buy those little bitty beads. Of course, that's pretty. Oh, now how about a big... A big one. Gotta find the hole. Turn it around here somewhere. There it is. Sometimes I'll put on my magnifying glasses. Oh, look at that. You know the ones you get at the Dollar Tree? <laughs> look at that one. Isn't that pretty? And now we need another little, maybe a little silver one to kind of stop it. Now, I like that. Let's go up here. We'll start. I will add a little glue, rotate it a little bit. Go to the next bead. You'll figure out how to hold it once you kind of get in the in the rhythm of put a little glue with your little tip. Slide the bead down. All right, the next one. Put a little glue, slide the bead down. This one. 
little glue, rotate it, slide the bead down. Oh, let's see if I've got a... Oh, wouldn't that be pretty? Here's a bead cap. Let's see this. I've got some bead caps. I forgot about those. Oh, look at that. You know, there's the little wire things that they cup the bead. Let's put that on there. Oh, isn't that pretty? Put a little glue. And put your, let your bead cap go down. But I think I still need this, this last little silver bead right there. Put that on. Let's see, can I see the hole? And there you have. Press in your little. What do you think of that one? in the little cap. Now it has to dry completely standing on the head. Just like that. Just stand them in your little cup. Okay, could put a Kleenex or something at the bottom to help them stand up or something. Well, alright, let me get some more beads out and let's see what we can do. Let's see what else we can find. Then I'll show you some of the ones <laughs> that I practice with with old beads. Alright, be back in a minute. Okay, so I'm putting some of the finishing touches while I was off camera so I can show you the next step. So, and then I'm going to show you the ones that I... So I'm putting the last glue, just a little dab, and then a lot of times I'll take it and hold it upside down too. Just put a little pressure, just kind of make sure everything is in its place. I found some silver be I had gold bead bead caps and I had some silver ones so I thought oh I'll start adding these so now I'm gonna show you the ones let them sit a little bit and then I'll show you those I'm gonna show you some old ones that one's kind of pretty it's kind of strange looking but <laughs> look I got my creativity going on let's see, I'll go ahead and put a little glue on this hey we don't have nothing else to do tonight but Make us some little Jay's little charm stick pins. Okay. There we go. I'll just stick that in the cup too. Hey. All right, so now we'll just kind of brush this aside. We'll kind of move that while they're sitting. Then I'll show you the ones that I made. Uh, I like to clean off my little tip. Just take uh, a little. You know, a little towel, a little piece of paper, a little um, paper towel, and wipe your little tip off. I don't know what happened to my towel. And then be sure to put your top back on, on your glossy accent. See how nice and handy? These that we didn't use, be sure to put things up, especially these pins. We can put the beads up, but put the pins in. And I found this little container at Michael's, but you can get any kind of container. You know, a Cool Whip container. If you had Cool Whip in it or something, anything that's going to keep them safe, you know, so they will not fall out. This locks down. It has a little lock on it, so I know that I can't by accident knock it over and I ever step or hurt myself with these pins. They are dangerous. Okay, so I got that done. Now, while we're waiting on this, oh, I was just going to show you, you can use all kind of little beads as little spacers or separators, you know. If you have beads already that are not on string, maybe you've already taken yours loose. And I'll show you how, you know, I had this big old thing of pearls you can get at Michael's or somewhere, you know. It comes in a big bag, and they're all different sizes. Okay, so I'll show you how I use those. But anytime they have a little sale, but we're not going to get into beading. But these are, I already have these. But it's fun to see if you can, you know, make a pin to match maybe whatever you just knit. You knit it or you crocheted something and a scarf or something. Be nice to add a pin though, wouldn't it? That's just regular beads. Okay. So they go back in my little bead thing over here. Okay, I'll put those out of the way. Alright. Now just while I'm waiting, I'm just showing you some of the ones when I first started. They're, look, they are ugly, but that's okay. You get the you get the drift. <laughs> you get to see how I'm Let's see, maybe if I move this over here so you don't see that in the background. There we go. 
There's one. Okay. Like I said, I got this little bowl. This is just candle. A scented candle that came in a little metal container. And that's how I keep my pins. Okay, there's some. It's just some I, like I said, when I first started. And I wanted to. Thanks to the scrapbookers that I watched. And of course, I'm going to link uh, the ones that I found, that I was able to find. Give them a big shout out. I don't know if they're still... Let's see, something different. Oh, I don't know. You know, I just did little simple ones. I tried to be... Look, I tried to come up with ideas of mixing beads and a little inexpensive. I did not go way out of the way to buy expensive beads. There's that one. Oh, look. That has a nice look to it, doesn't it? That looks expensive. Not. <laughs> I like these little funny looking beads. Little kind of fake looking faux stones. Isn't that pretty? See another one. I think I showed you that one. How about, oops, How about that one? And these, like I said, these are just some that I designed and made up on my own, just playing with the beads. Now, what I want to do is show you how I took their idea and made it my own. So, that was their part. They, I saw the idea there. Now I'm going to show you how I took that idea because once I started to uh, make them, I realized, well, you can't give this, like I said, that's dangerous. You couldn't depend on people to do the, always do the right thing or remember, stick themselves. Anything could happen. So I came up with a little cap. Uh, you might say, well, you could use an earring back. The earring backs, there's a, it goes through. It doesn't really, you can't depend on a little earring back, those little stoppers, to keep, to keep you safe, to keep your, the point safe. So, I came up with something. This is my part. This is their part. Here's what I've added. And as you can see, once I start to use it, It just slides right on, and there you go. And is that on camera? Yes, it is. So what you're going to need next... Oops, hit the camera, sorry. Ta-da! It's some clay. <laughs> Plain old clay you get at any of the stores. And you don't need a whole bunch. You just need one, one brick of it. I would get something neutral. You know, like this has a little metallic-looking gold in it. I don't know the name. I've had it so long. But this is Primo Accent. You can get any brand. It doesn't matter which brand you get. All of them are the same. Or here's Fimo with kind of uh, white, white with glitter in it that dries translucent when you use it. It dries. It's going to be translucent a little bit. Like Sarah or Gold. Or here's Black. Here's some Primo with black with a little glitter. If you wear a lot of black or maybe the project you're making in the beads have a little black in them. You might want a black uh, end cap. Or a cap, I guess that's what I call it. Here's just plain old gold again. So, what you want to do... One time I thought I was going to get into clay. <laughs> I got a whole bunch of clay. Until I realized how hard it is to work with clay. How it hurts your hand. Because you have to knead it. So, what I want to do, I'm going to take a little piece of this clay, and I'm going to knead it off camera, kind of warm it up in my hands. It takes a lot. I see. I wonder, do people with uh, clay, I, I wonder if they have arthritis in their fingers and joints, 
because when I first started, got the idea that I might want to do clay, you know, you know, Jay, uh, I caught it on sale. One Mike, uh, Michaels, one of the Michaels across town was moving to a high end location to one of the shopping center where there was a, it's called the Avenue. Well, naturally they, they, at the end, after moving a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff they didn't want to take old merchandise because they were already having new merchandise. Well, some of their clay, probably because it was old, oh, they had it for like 10 cents a brick. <laughs> and I just started buying up clay. And I thought, okay, I'll start making some clay buttons or something. I even sent some to my friend Brenda, and she's like, what? <laughs> I guess she said, no, I ain't getting into no clay buttons. But it was fun. I sent her a little uh, a, a cow, net cow that I had knitted, and I made some buttons to go with it, and I just sent her some extra clay, a little brick of it, so she could, if she wanted to make some buttons for something. But you see, it takes a lot to knead clay. But what, even for the little bit now, I have a pasta machine. Oh, I went way out, people. Did I tell you? Oh, I went way out. How about a pasta machine where you turn and do the clay? Oh, I don't know what I was going to make. I, I got it under that's brand new. Got it with a coupon from Joey. <laughs> so I, I, you know, I didn't spend a lot because I got it with a coupon, like a 60% coupon. But just sitting here talking, I was going to go off camera, but just sitting here talking, see my hands are warming this up, but I'm telling you, when I first started just playing with clay, I wasn't even making nothing serious. I was making some little round buttons and just silly stuff. Little rolling into snakes like the kids do. You know how you make the snake and then just kind of roll it around. In the middle of the night, I remember waking up with my fingers, <laughs> my joints in my my fingers right in here. They were hurt. I didn't know what was going on. You know, I had been doing it for a few days, so, you know, it didn't happen right away. So I couldn't figure out what in the world is wrong with my hands. My fingers were hurting and stiff. And then I realized it's from the clay. So I don't know how people that work with big or a lot of clay, if they... Okay, so, all right, I'm going to soften this up. And then we're going to show you the next step, my part. All right, keep working. Look. Oh, I'm sweating. <laughs> but it's worth it. Keep going back in a minute. Well, as you can see, I'm still trying to warm up these last little bits of clay. <laughs> and then we're going to roll them into, you know, like the kids say, uh, little snakes. But we don't want real thin snakes. Okay, be sure to take off your rings to any kind of jewelry. You don't want clay... Uh, stuck into your jury, getting into your jewelry. So, you just get a snake started, and you take your fingers and just roll, and you kind of move your fingers from the center outward, just rolling like this. Just roll, and then just kind of let your fingers just kind of move outward. And you just roll, roll your snake from the center out to keep them, to keep a nice size. Okay, so you make a, now we do not want them real skinny. We don't want a skinny, skinny snake. You see, I've rolled some out, and I'm rolling this one out. It can be rolled a little bit more. I just start towards the center and just kind of move my hands towards the outside edge. See, that's a nice size right there. Okay, now you see I have three little, my three little snakes. I'm working on a piece of tile. You could work on just a plain little old plate you have at the house. Anything that's oven safe, uh, because this is not actually you know it's not like a high baking or anything it's I use a bake at mine at about two my oven's old but about 250 they say 230 but I don't have 230 on my oven so I do about 250 you know and it depends just look on each block each uh, one of your little blocks or your little block that you get it will give you the 
uh, you know, but it's not a uh, high uh, heating or anything. About 250 for 30 minutes. And like I said, you just put it on a little plate, little 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 saucer or something that you know is oven friendly. It's not high heat, so it's not going to do anything. I use, like I said, I have plenty of old leftover tiles, so I just stick this whole piece of tile right in the oven just like this. Okay, now before we do put it in the oven, we have to cut our little pieces so that we can make our little cap, our little... So I normally just take... Now, you don't want it to be real short, but I, I've got an old pallet knife, but you can have an old serrated kitchen knife, an old one or something from the junk store or from the Dollar Tree or something, just a kitchen knife. And you just... hope this is on camera. And you just start cutting about where you think we don't want them too short we want them long enough okay now so there I've cut that one into four pieces see that now I'm going to take each piece and I'm going to kind of tap the each end to kind of push it back together a little bit see that shortens it a little bit see that I just took my finger and I made it not pointy on the ends, but more. Let's see, was that on camera? Yeah, okay. See, I just took my fingers and I just kind of tapped it a little bit. I'm not really pushing. I'm just tapping. Tap, tap, tap. Okay. And see, I got a little flat edge. That helps flatten out the edge a little bit. And if you need to roll the cut edge just a little bit just to smooth it if it's kind of you know just do that then you take another piece and I'm not gonna push on I'm just tapping it with both fingers just to get that nice flat on flat on each side and then I kind of roll this edge a little bit to soften it and then I roll maybe if I have to roll this one just just a little rolling not much just so that it's not jagged or sticking out tap it back into shape if it gets out of shape roll now if you want one end a little have more of a little cone shape then you roll that end say if I wanted to take one end like this one and just roll it a little more just this side not the other side and then I can tap this side to keep it kind of flat but I can roll this side just a little bit tap tap roll this side to keep it you're not we're not looking for perfection we just don't want no hole on this end sometimes I have to take my little just make sure there's no hole that the point is going to come through. If it is, then you have to really roll it good and push it and roll it again. I saw, saw a little, like a little hole on the come, but now I roll and then I see if it'll stand up or if it's flat enough on the one side. And I put that aside. And I continue to go. Tap a little bit just to kind of push it in. Roll the cut edges just a little bit, each one. If you want one edge, one side, like I said, to go into a little cone shape more, just roll on that in a little more. Roll it to with your finger. Tap it where you have to. Roll a little bit. And you don't have to be all this precise. I'm just telling you what I did. See if you can get, uh, you know, that other end. See, I see like a little hole or something on this one. So I'm going to tap it. So that it doesn't keep getting longer. I don't want it to keep... I want to tap it. Then I'll roll this in again. That's going to have a little more of a cone shape. And there it is. So, now these are a little large, but I had to make them large enough for you to see what I was doing. I 
Okay, tap. And they'll shrink a little bit in the oven also. They might shrink a little bit. Okay. So now I have, and of course I'm going to cut all the rest of them. And then I want to see if I have a flat, see if my, see if it'll at least stand up so I have a flat edge. There you go. Now, you take one of the pins. It can be a blank one or one you've been working with. And you take your little little piece of clay you just made and the flat on the flat end flat side take your pin and stick it in stick it in the center as much as possible just kind of rotate it don't push too hard or you'll warp the clay just kind of twist it in kind of work the clay just kind of hold the clay between your fingers twisting it in and you don't want to go in too far just in enough that you know it's in there and then I sometimes do this. I take it and roll it with the with the pin in the inside to smooth it around so that that hole is smooth. See there? I know it's in there. Then I remove the pin, lay it over there to be fired. All right, I grab another one. There's a flat edge. I take my pin and put it towards the center as much as possible. <clears throat> kind of slowly rotate the pin back and forth giving just a little hint as you're pushing it in but you're not pushing it in too far you don't want to go way down here because that eventually might work its way but you push it in just enough then stop and while the pin's still in there roll the clay and that will close the hole up around the pin a little bit and make it tighter See, just roll it. Oh, isn't that pretty? And there's your pretty cap. Now, they didn't have to be quite this large, but I had to make it large enough so you can see what I was doing. Does that make sense? See, there's a the pretty cap. Ooh, I'm you know, all in the shadow. I was holding it in the shadow, wasn't I'm sorry. There's it. So roll it while the pin's in there. Don't push the pin too far in. See, I think I almost pushed that one too far. Check and make sure there's no hole on the end. That you didn't push it too far. Okay, there's another one. Alright, go to the center. Just a little bit. You do not need to go very far into the clay. Alright, stop. Roll it around just to kind of... In fact, I'm going to put this so that the bead is off the edge of the tile, the tile here. So I'm going to roll it just a little bit, just to smooth things. Then I pull the pin out. I didn't go too far in. And I may as well do one more, do another one. Okay. Twist a little bit, push in just real, just ever so lightly. Stop, not in too far. Now bring it over to the edge somewhere, and I'm going to roll it smooth. Just make sure it didn't get all to keep it nice. Pull the pin out. Sit it over there. Okay. Now, if you were making a pin, and maybe you wanted to make a color coordinated, here's one. And I thought, well, that's a pretty color. That's close to it. So I would take and cut. And tap, kind of tap it in. You're trying to get a, one side at least to have a nice little flat area. Roll it. And if you want one end to be a little more on the pointy side, just roll that in. See if it'll stand up. So it'll stand up. So I know I've got a flat side. Take your pin. Go in just a little bit in the center. You do not have to go far into the clay. Now 
I'm going to have to take it to the edge so that it will stay. And I roll it just to smooth it out. Pull the pin out. And there. So now, when this is baked, you know, you can color coordinate it with the bead. That may be not a good color. I could have used blue maybe. But you can color coordinate it with the bead that you used. Let's see if I got another one. Like here's a pretty gold. I could... See, this will go pretty when I have the gold one. See that? Does that make sense? Okay. Well, I think that's about it. So now I have all of these just stick in my oven. I turn my oven on, on just on around 250. And I just let it kind of heat up, and then I sit, of course, I've got a piece of tile. I just sit it on the bottom rack of the oven, and uh, in about 30 minutes, I'll just 20, my oven, kinda, that's kind of high, so I'll probably check it about 20 minutes, and about 20, 25 minutes, and turn the oven off, and then I let it cool down. Just I just let them uh, uh, take them out of the oven and sit them somewhere so they can just cool down, and Voila, you have your little caps for our pins that we made ourselves. And like I said, if you wanted one end to be a little more on the cone side, just roll that in a little more if you want to. And there you have it. And you can, like I say, you can color coordinate them too. Now real quick, some of the ones, the ones that we started with that I was waiting for the glue, I had them upside down. All right, let's just take a look at some of these. I'll just lay them here on the towel. Well, I'll show you first. Look at that. Isn't that pretty? Of course, I will, I will put them back in a cup and let them continue to dry, making sure. But I wanted you to see what we, the ones that we created on camera. Look at that one. Isn't that pretty? And see, I can make a yellow. I can maybe use some yellow or something like that. You can color coordinate if you want. Here's this pretty. Look at that. Pretty brown. Here's a pretty clear. Isn't that pretty? Here's one of my little old pins, one that I had before. See, and it just pops right on. And here's one. Oh, this one's pretty. Look at that one. Oops. Look at that one. So you can be creative. But like I said, my bees are just plain everyday bees that you could pick up. Especially on sale. Look at that one. Isn't that pretty? pretty white and then of course look at that one so thanks to friends that I didn't even know I had over and over in the scrapbooking over on YouTube scrapbooking and I will link a bunch of links down to people that you know like I said this was back in 2012 2013 but uh, but the videos are still there, and you can still see how they made theirs and all the swaps. I just wanted something for my sweater, and when I saw that, ding, 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 immediately I got an idea of, wouldn't that look pretty on a sweater, on something knitted? So, before we, before I go, I thought what we do is give it a little try. So I rushed over there and got one of my old scarves, and I brought it over here. And I thought, well, just for fun, we'll just see how they look now I always just throw my little things in here with I just keep them in here so I can find them but eventually if you just sit and make some you're gonna need a little container a little plastic something to hold um, hold your little bottoms so for instance I just wanted to try one I was just real excited to give this 
All right, now here's one. I'm going to just give this a nice little spin. We're going to come here and we're going to put it in just for the fun of it. See how it looks. Oh my gosh. Oh, oh my goodness. Oh, I'm having fun already. Now let's see, can I find a color that's more to, like I said, if you want to color coordinate with the clay, you can, but I'm just going to stick this one on here. Let's see. And find the little hole. There it is. You can push it in so that it is secure. Now look at that. Now I'm going to bring it real close and hold it right here on the camera. Look. Let's try another one. I just grabbed up this little scarf right quick. Oh my gosh, I got a sneeze. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Maybe set some of that dust. I hadn't dusted since I've been making all these beads <laughs> for my friends. <laughs> I probably need to dust. No, I probably need to clean up. Okay. Who wants to clean up when you can have fun making, look, making stick pins? A little gift from our scrapbook friends. With Jay's edition now, the little cap. Now we can use it. Isn't that pretty? So now you can just see how you can just pop them on, put them in there, put them up in something. Here's a pretty brown one. Oh, or did I use that one before? I can't remember. No, I don't think so. Okay, I'm going to get a gold one this time. Oh, it's kind of like a, pink, like a little pink. What do you think of that? Oh my gosh, my diamonds are just sparkling. Isn't that pretty? Now, don't you think that's just a little something extra? All right, so, but let me just show you this, one more little thing. Only because, you know, I try to think, okay, now, I see how we're gonna wear it. Now, I want to show you how, if I was given a gift, you know, I would give a person more than one. I mean, you see how inexpensive they are to make, and you're going to get a bunch of those pins in that bag. That little bag of Joann's, you get quite a few, 50, 60, 100, I can't even remember now. But, I would give them at least one pin on the project, on the scarf, or their neck warmer, whatever, with the caps. And then, I would, look at that. Again, thank you to our scrapbook people. Every once in a while, I'll have a coupon at, um, you know, of course, Hobby Lobby or a Joanne somewhere, and I'll pick up something really inexpensive. I don't know about their paper. I don't understand that. I don't know all about the reflection stuff. I don't buy, you know, I, I can understand paper, and I can understand beads, <laughs> and I can understand stick pins. That's as far as I probably go. All right, so, but I thought, well, how can I give this to someone oh there's a pretty one too look so i when these are on sale i have coupons i buy these little little all this pretty paper and these little things here so here's look a gift from a look gift from jay so i take some paper and everyone knows what these little scissors are with the little funny um you know they have the little funny blade Okay, so I would take this and just kind of cut around the paper, at least at one side or one edge. I don't even try to measure or anything. I just cut something really. Something that my stick pen can go in. And then, all you have to do is stick your pin in. Before I cut off the bottom, I need to know about how much I need. Get it to come back through. Okay? Then you can add... Where's my little bottom? Oh, gosh, dear, where's your bottom? Then you can add your little... And then you can cut off some if you like. You can cut a little design, or you can cut it, you know, in a cute way, a cute fashion. Maybe I'll go this way on this way. 
You can cut it real cute, the little paper. Now, just for fun, because you're going to do a better job. I'm just doing this so real quick so my camera won't want that. Just for fun, though, if you're going to give these to someone, and these little, like I said, you're going to have a lot of clay left. I would always take one extra, put it on the back, take a little... Now, you might come up with a way to look a little nicer. But I just stick mine on with a little extra scotch tape. I see that when I buy things in the store. If there's an extra button, sometimes they'll... I put on an extra in case they lose it. The one on the front. See, it can pop off if I didn't put it on there good. Or they can just, you know, just lose. You can lose it. All right, push it in. There you go. And, like I said, you're going to do a better job. I'm just... Showing you how you can kind of put it on some of this little card card stock. You could um, you can make some kind of little design. You can let's see. I don't know. I just always go up. I just always do the same thing. <laughs> let's see how the birds are looking. Okay, the birds are going this way too, so I'm gonna go up. Okay, and then I'll come down this side. So maybe a small one. Go across. And I just, it's just a cute way. Then you can take your little pen. You can put it in. You can take a whole punch, but the pins are so sharp, I just push them in there. Put them in there, going through. Grab me one of these little little end caps and then since they're so inexpensive since we're making them out of clay and a clay I keep saying brick a clay block only costs you know hardly anything you put an extra on the back just in case if it slips off or they lose it so they can continue to wear the pin and you can put this in your little package in your box in your card or if you have a nice card you can Open the card inside and simply simply stick the pin inside the card. You know, just like I've done here. See if this was see if this was a card. Let's find the thing. See if you had a card. And let's just see. we'll just fold this like a little beautiful card. Oh, thank you so much. Oh, and then you take you just find you make a beautiful stick pin. See? You put it inside the card. Of course, your card will have writing, or you can write, write your own personal message. Put it in. And, of course, you got to put your little, Jay's little cap. So, and then, of course, an extra cap you can put on the back. And you'll have some pretty words in your, in your little card. But you see how that can, see? How you can just kind of. Do your own thing. I'm telling you, this has been fun. I I I, I'm, I haven't crafted in a long time, have I? And I just couldn't hardly stop once I got started. I had something else entirely for this month, and it just was taking too long. And I have a long project for December, and it's really pretty. And uh, I said, no, I'll just do something really simple and short. And voila, <laughs> beads, beads, beads. And all the fun things you can do, thanks to, like I said, to our scrapbook friends for sharing. Now see, when you share, look at all the new friends you make. And I'm going to link all the ones, the old videos that I watched to get inspiration, how they inspired me to kind of use it uh, to take uh, something of theirs and to use on our knitting projects or crochet. So... I think I've got everything. I think you've seen everything. I think you're going to have a good time doing this. And, of course, you know, I want to wish you a very happy Thanksgiving. And I want everyone to really take time and enjoy a little downtime with your family and friends. And love making stick pins. <laughs> so from Jay... Jay's Knit and Pearl Jam. See ya!